Hi, my name is Don Bowman, and here at Agilicus, we've been using Mutual TLS as part of a workload identity system uh, for some time now, and I thought I would explain it in more uh, lay terms. And let's think about this for a second. So what's an annoyance that happens in your everyday life? Your phone rings, and you're nearly certain that the number, although it looks like it's close by, is someone you don't know. And you pick it up, and it's a scam. Here in Canada, one of the most common scams we call the CRA scam. CRA is the tax authority. And the way it works is somebody calls, and you get this message, CRA has opened a case in your name, they're going to arrest you, you've done something wrong. And the problem is, they know who you are, but you don't know who they are. And maybe there's a day you're going to go to call CRA, and how do you know you're really talking to them? So in the face-to-face -face world, we've evolved to recognize people. So we know who we are. I know who you are, you know who I am. And it's a complex set of things. It's the face, but it's not just the face. It's how you act. It's a set of inherent properties in you. When we bring that on to an, even a modestly online world, like the phone world, what happens is the person that calls you, they are using the phone, and they're able to spoof the caller ID. So instead of it just being a number nearby, it might actually say Government of Canada or CRA. And that's because there's some inherent flaws in the phone system, SS7, etc. And they may or may not be easily fixable over time. But effectively, the caller ID is a very untrustworthy identifier of who somebody else is. And this is really key because it's not just that they know who I am, but it's also that I need to know who they are. If you think about another thing you commonly use online, let's talk about your online banking. So you open up your browser, and you go through the wide world of the web, go to some website that's your bank. And in your browser, you get this little green lock icon, and it says something like TLS, certificate OK. And you're like, great, that's really my bank. They don't know who you are, but you actually, you're not really sure that it is the bank, because spear phishing Somebody can register a domain that looks similar to your bank, and you could be tricked into it. So it's 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 a stronger form of one-way uh, identity, but it's not a two-way identity, and it's not super strong. So in the third case, which is something that inside a system like ours, you can imagine the flow being something like this. A user interacts with a front-end web application. In this side, there's user identity. They, they prove some credentials of who they are hopefully two-factor identity, not just a password, but something that proves who they are. And then this system proves who it is with that TLS certificate. But then it turns around and uses a set of other resources, databases, images, other things that it presents to you, and they in turn use other things. And this might be all in the domain of one company, but then this might in turn go through the web and talk to some other one out here. How do we take identity, in this case, a person to machine, and translate it into the machine to machine world? Well, it turns out that our first tool is something we call mutual TLS. Mutual TLS, each side has a certificate that it signs its connections with, and the other side is programmed in advance to know, based on them having a common signing authority, well, only someone I trust could have signed that, therefore you're someone I trust. And there's a standard for this um, called Spiffy, uh, Simple Production Identity for Everyone. And that allows me to federate it and then take it to this next level so that this domain can trust my domain. And this is really important because you want to be careful. You don't want to be exchanging your banking information with some third party. There's something called a man-in-the-middle attack. Often inside these systems, it's very difficult to have the concept of identity because you know it's just an IP address. Going back to the phone numbers, a phone number was not an accurate means of establishing identity. Neither is an IP address. Just because I think I'm contacting a certain IP doesn't mean it's the IP in question. Just because I'm contacted by that IP doesn't mean who it is who it says it is. So what's the moral of the story? Identity is tough. Um, you know, In the face-to-face -face world, it takes time to establish identity. You know, a lot of eyewitnesses are very untrustworthy because they, you know, people can't quickly identify faces. It's actually more than just a face. In the electronic world, 
identity needs to be much better than just the equivalent of the phone number, the IP. And we call that workload identity. So on this side, we've got user-based, role-based access control. On this side, we have workload to workload firewall, which workloads can talk to which workload, mutual TLS, spiffy. Anyway, thanks very much. Um, hope you enjoyed the talk and comments down below. Bye-bye.